Hey y'all, it's me, Nisi Lynn. I hope you're having a great Friday morning. It is 7.29 here, a little later than I planned again. Oh well, that way you know it's me. It is September 25th of 2020. It is Floss Tube number 40. So this is a channel about cross stitch and a few other things, uh, other kind of stitching, crafting type things. So if that interests you and you haven't been here before, hang around. Um, if you're not into that, you probably won't be into this. So, um, you know, keep on swiping whichever direction. This isn't a dating app and I never do understand how those works. I saw some girls with a shirt on when we were in, um, I guess we were in NOLA a couple of years back. And I had to ask one of the kids, what does that shirt mean? It said, swipe left, swipe left, swipe right, or vice versa. Anyway, I was very intrigued. And they were like, no, mom, it's a dating app. And I was like, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> you live and learn whether you're on um, a YouTube channel or not. So, here we are. Um, this morning, before I start into questions or anything, I was going to show... I found these the other day and we were talking about my love of specialty stitches and the fact that I embroidered before I cross stitched. And if maybe that's why I love them so much, uh, because if you start out with cross stitch, then you're learning something in addition to just your cross stitches, getting all your cross stitches right. And if you started off embroidering, you already know these stitches. So they're in your, you know, they're in your repertoire, they're in your wheelhouse, whatever. And, so you're comfortable with them. So um, I came across these things the other day and I thought I'd show y'all. This I did, and I did not put my initials or year on it, but it would have had to been 95-ish or so, something like that. But of course I did not know how to finish anything at all. And I made this because I thought I liked it and the kids would like it and it hung on our door forever. Um, but you can see it's all embroidered stitches, satin stitches, chain stitch, um, uh, what are, there's outline stitch and different things on there. And of course here again, I didn't know how to do, I just ironed it onto something and then stitched it around the border here. But I think that's the thing. If you start out doing something more like this and I cross stitched before I did this also, but I started embroidering when I was probably, I don't know, 12, 11, I don't know, something like that. So I think maybe if you started off with things like this, where you do a lot of satin stitch and different things, then you not only are not afraid of the specialty stitches, but you like the specialty stitches. They kind of, um, I guess they kind of take you back, if you will, to um, something that you used to do and something that, that you love. So when I was getting out, uh, starting to get out some Halloween stuff, I found that and I thought I'd share that with y'all. And um, a lot of y'all chimed in and said last week when I asked about it, that you love specialty stitches, but yes, you had embroidered before you cross stitched. So I really am wondering if, um, if that's not a lot of it, but there are so many, uh, there's so many tutorials on doing specialty stitches out there. Um, I know that uh, Jean Farish has a lot of like specialty stitches on her things and she does real quick little things. Um, we can do some on here if y'all are interested in that. Uh, the camera angle, I'm gonna try to show a pin stitch because there's been a lot of talk about a pin stitch stop and a pin stitch start. Uh, so I've got a needle threaded up over here. So I'm gonna try to tilt down and do that. And then um, I finally have nearly got the little pumpkin pin keep that I had um, did last year that I wanted to share with all y'all on the 4,000 subscriber video. And I could not get it on a graph that was where I felt like I could put it where it could go online. So um, I've got it, I've, I've got it on a program and got it all but the border done now. So, I mean, I think for me, anything on a computer is just a chore. I mean, it's just hard for me. But this is so funny because years ago, before I had an LNS or anything, and this would have been, this was 96. So it's been about the same and it's all dusty. So I just grabbed it out so y'all can see it. But I didn't have access to a lot of patterns or anything. And I wanted a Halloween piece. So I just stitched this off some graph paper and out of the top of my head. So it just said happy Halloween with a little ghosty and a pumpkin and a cat. 
and I just kind of stacked them on each other. And then the kids and I used to make little origami animals all the time. So there's a little spider that I stuck on there and he's always stayed on years later, even though he's all crushed up and ugly. I can't take him off because the kids and I used to make them all the time and have fun. So um, I've been stitching a long time and making what I wanted. If I couldn't find what I wanted, I made what I wanted. And I guess this is one of those times right there. So that was, um, I came across him when I was getting, when I saw the embroidered thing. So I thought I would dig um, both of those out and share this morning. But I have had a lot of um, other things going this week, not just stitching. Um, we got a wreath making session and you can't see the whole thing for the arm of the chair, I just realized, but he's propped over there. He'll go on the front door, but we have that eight foot doors and um, you have to get the big ladder and all that to, uh, cause the wreath hanger won't work. So I'll have to, into the very top of the door. So the flat part of the door that looks at the sky I'll thumbtack a little, a ribbon in and then hang it down on that. And then of course that won't put a nail hole in my husband's door. James Williams and I always having the war about saving the walls and saving the doors. Do you have to put a hole in it? You see the walls aren't covered yet and we've been here, what, 15 months? Because he would have me put nothing on the walls, you know, because well, we're saving them for something. I'm not sure what, but do you have to put a hole in the wall? Yes. Yes, I do. I do have to put a hole in the wall because I live here. I'm pretty sure we bought this house to live here. I don't think we're saving it for something. I don't, I don't even understand this mindset, but whatever. But that has been a war we've had since last Friday um, over thumbtacks at the store, so. Yeah, I was the queen of losing it, but I walked away before I completely lost it in the store this week over thumbtacks, so go me. Go me. Now, anniversaries. We're going to jump right in with anniversaries. Um, let me see. Gypsy L. Jay's 37 years. Uh, CLU High Yo Stitcher is 11 years with her, um, with her partner, and she's getting married this year, so congratulations. Kimberly, 11 years and 25 years. Tina, 28. Michelle, eight years. Um, Emily is 40 years and their grandpa and grandma names are Chip and Dale and I love that. That that made me so happy. I'm Chip, I'm Dale. I love me some Chip and Dale. They're always happy and fun. Uh, Phyllis, 30. Lori, 27. Madonna, 38. And then the highest this week was BJ who was 50. So congratulations on um, sticking with somebody through the thick and thin for a long time because that's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot to put up with somebody on the day in and day out. I'm not saying that he ain't putting up with me too because he is, but I just feel like I'm much less of a burden. So, um, you know, you probably wouldn't agree with that, but oh well. PJ uh, is looking for a cross stitch pattern and I looked it up, it's so cute. But I, it's an older pattern and it's hard to find. I couldn't find it on anything either. It's called This Too Shall Pass by Count Your Blessings. And um, I couldn't find it anywhere. So if any of y'all have it for sale or share or have seen it anywhere, if you'll holler, she is looking for This Too Shall Pass. It has a little row of houses and has, um, seem like little trees on either side. Maybe a sunny and a cloudy like this. And then This Too Shall Pass in the center. It's really cute, but it's by Count Your Blessings. Uh, Penny wanted to know how I get so much stitch during the week. Y'all, my nose, my allergies are killing me. Sorry. I got bags under my eyes and itchy nose. Um, I stitch in the evening when James Williams gets home. And after we eat, um, we watch. he watches TV for a couple of hours and I watch, I mean, I'm sitting there too. And so I stitch while we watch TV. So I get in a couple of hours in the evening and occasionally I'll get a little bit at lunch if the girls are napping and I don't have something else I'm knee deep in but usually not at lunch. And I, unless the weather's really, really bad, like in the wintertime some, um, they'll, I'll get them a little sewing thing out or something and we'll all sit around their little, you know, little cards that they thread through or little sewing things they do and we'll all sew together. But normally I don't, um, they, you know, had prefer to play dolls or swim or, you know, something else, read or something like this. So. Um, that's, so I don't, I don't know. I feel like I don't 
I feel like I don't get a lot of stitching time, but I know I get tons more than some people, so I am thankful for that, but I wish I stitched faster. Um, and then we did have the specialty stitches embroidered first that I just showed you. Um, Long Dog Stitcher, Jana, Jean, Karen, Colette, Melissa, and Strawberry Field Stitcher all think that it's because they embroidered first, um, and that makes you more comfortable. So that was the consensus that um, that, that was what it was. Judy wanted to know what linen am I using for my health and peace. Uh, it's a 28 count uh, week style work linen. It's a week's linen. Um, it's beautiful linen. It's very soft. It is got um, like the holes in it are kind of big. So I even heard somebody this week talking about, y'all, I'm sorry, my nose is itching. I'm going to get the corona now. And um, that your needle will fall through. So it is a loose weave. So if that bothers you, you know, this might not be the one for you, but it is a beautiful piece of linen. It stitches up really nicely, but it is, um, the hole, the weave is very open. So, you know, you've got a lot of space in there. So, um, be mindful of that. And so if you use a tiny needle or anything like that, my needle falls through and I don't use a particularly tiny needle. So, you know, I use whatever I've got on there. So I've got a probably a different kind of needle on everything I got in here. Um, Jane says she was the queen of losing it at the Osaka airport. Now listen, she's trying to get her family home after a long stint overseas and did okay from Nagasaki to Osaka. And then when she gets to Osaka, they tried to tell her her tickets have been canceled and she said she lost it. And I'm feeling you. I have lost it at the airport. Nowadays, I probably wouldn't get to fly on the airplane. The funny thing when I lost it at the airport is then James, I'm, I've lost it. I mean, I have literally completely lost it. They have ran us from one end of the terminal to the other one three times. Now, it'd have been different if it was just me and my junk, but it was myself, James Williams, my sister, my mama, and all four kids with all our bags and stuff for, for a trip to Mexico. And I get it, they have no control over that. But look here. You had to know before you moved me to that other one, somebody should have checked and made sure everything was okay. That now I gotta bring all this back to the other end again. And I'm throwing a fit. And James Williams makes one comment. He says, this is ridiculous. <laughs> and the ticket lady says, sir, do I need to call security? <laughs> you can get away with a lot of smack talk when you're 5'4" that you can't get away with when you're 6'4". I'm just gonna throw that out there for the world in case y'all didn't know. If you're 6'4", you might wanna keep that in check because you're a lot more threatening than somebody who's 5'4". So, there you go. Yeah, so yeah, I had been just throwing a big eye while I'd fit and then he makes one, that's ridiculous. <laughs> He's gonna get escorted off the property. <laughs> Lord have mercy, which would have been a bad thing because, you know, that trip, we were in Maslan and um, we were off the res a lot and then you have to do the money. I don't like to do the money. I don't like to do the money conversion. I don't like math. Y'all know how I feel about math. Math is for people but can't use their words and I can use my words just fine. So, I need James on trips like that to do the math, to convert my money because uh-uh, that ain't about my life. So, yeah, when she said it, I was like, oh, dang. Because I didn't want to have to convert my own money in Mexico that time. Oh, that was bad. So, Jane, I would have lost it, too. I'm glad they went ahead and got you straightened out and got you home with your babies because that's ridiculous. This ridiculous. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know. It ain't no joy working at the airport, either. I'm not saying it is. Anytime you have to work with the public, which I am a member of, I'm feeling for you because I will snap, just snap, and Lord have mercy. Connie made me laugh because she said she likes how I say acorn. And I, I thought, I read it and I thought, no, I say acorn. And I sat there a minute and I thought, oh, and I think Connie's from Ohio. And I thought, oh, she says acorn. <laughs> that's really hard for me to say. Acorn. That's just like 
craziness. And so I was like, oh, yikes, acorn. Because when I think about acorn, I think about, I don't even have one, you know, like a little, like, like an ear of corn. Can you hand me acorn? Like a corn. So yeah, that made me laugh really bad. Y'all, I'm itching in my ears, in my throat, in my eyes this morning. Yikes. I don't know what's in the air out there today, but it's after me. Um, oh my gosh. And y'all, Debbie, we were talking about kids embarrassing you and acting like they're wild, feral animals. Her little girl had to pee when they were on the tube in London. And I know there ain't no bathroom on there. Now, now sometimes there's bathrooms on buses now. If you go on a tour bus, you know, they'll have a bathroom on there and them nice ones. But I know there ain't one on the tube in London. I ain't never been there, but I know there ain't. And she held it as long as she could. Couldn't hold it no more. Some businessman had to jump up, you know, because the splash factor on his fancy suit would have been bad. And then she had to go to Harrods, which I have heard of, and pay. And if I did the conversion right, six pounds for a pair of little girl's panties. Now y'all, if I, if I type it in right in my computer, that is $7.50 for a pair of kids' panties. What? What? You could buy a yard of fabric for $7.50. Do you know how many pair of kids' panties you could get out of that? Lord have mercy. I like to have died. So yes, Harrods did see you coming in. Boy, they, they knew you were a desperate woman because that is insane. Oh, yeah, they will get us every time. Oh, and I forgot to bring my little, I was gonna bring my other Jeep Collins piece. Colorado Cross Stitcher said she is a Jeep Collins fan too. I thought I was the only one in the world. Um, I have a lot of James Avery and I have tons of Pandora, but um, I do have several Jeep Collins pieces and I love them, but they are hard to find and um, he doesn't design anymore and stuff. And so I am glad I'm not the only one out there. So there'll be at least two of us hanging on to those because I have the little Jonah and the whale and I have um, the one of the Noah's Ark I had on last week. I have a couple of pieces and I love them so much. So I'm glad I'm not the only one. Uh, Janet Jabber, if y'all, I watched her video um, this week. I caught several videos this week, finally getting caught up, stitching with the sister Lees. I saw them, they're alive and well and okay, and that made my heart happy. Um, but she, Janet pulled out her, and a lot of people will call it their under the bed box, of pieces that they have stitched that they've never finished off, that they've never FFO'd. They're just finished stitching. I don't know what my necklace and my t-shirt be fighting with each other this morning for, but they sure are. Um, but she showed a lot of really cute pieces with really cute, um, especially all the little Jabco buttons and things on there that I'd never seen. So um, if you want to just see some pretty finished pieces and, and chill out, and she got to go on a girl's trip with her friends. So, hmm, Janet. So she had a lot of cute stitch pieces in there. Y'all go check those out. Those are adorable. Vicki said her husband... Um, is accusing her of quilt creep because her quilting and her crafting is moving into other rooms out of her craft room. And, and I'm feeling that, I am feeling that Vicki. And I do think that quilt creep or craft creep is a good name for that because it is just moving right along. Cheryl asked about, was this a Swedish weave and throw right there? I'm not sure if that's what it's called. Um, let me see if I can grab it real quick. My Aunt Pat makes some for us. And this one, I adore. Um, I should have put on the back of that chair right there. So I don't know if it's called Swedish weaving or not. It's real heavy, real, I mean, it's real weighty, and it looks like it's maybe made on, maybe monk's cloth or something. But that's what the back of it looks like. And I do love it, and I get it out in the fall, especially because I love the colors in it. So, I, like I said, I don't know if that's what it's called or not, but I do love it. Um, Shingle Spring Stitcher says, um, I wanted to know about my dyes that I usually use for my gray fabric, which I was gonna grab a piece and I didn't. I usually use the pearl gray writ and leave it in there and pull it up and leave it in there and pull it up till it's kind of getting kind of the darkness I want. And then if it's still not a little bit darker after it dries and everything, I'll do a black dunk. Sometimes I have to use the black. If you're using, okay, see, this here that I dyed, this is just some kind of an even weave, um, and I think it is all cotton. Yeah, this one, see, whatever this is, and I don't even remember where I got it, but even weave, like 28 count Monaco even weave, 
is usually 100% cotton. A natural fiber will take your dye a lot better than a not natural fiber because this is, this is a Jobelin or a Laguna and it's tea dyed, it's coffee dyed actually. But see, you can barely see the little modeling in it right there. So um, a synthetic fabric won't grab your dye as well. So I prefer to use, of course I love even weave, and I prefer to dye Ada, even weave, linen, all those natural fibers will grab the dye a lot better. So if you're doing Jobelin, Lugana, something like that, that's a, more of a synthetic or a mix, you're gonna have to either like dunk it, bake it in the microwave, in the oven, in the something, or, and then you may have to do it a couple of times because that synthetic fabric, just like in other clothes, um, if you've ever thrown like a piece of red in there and not realized it, if you'll notice the cotton things, anything cotton in your wash soaked up a lot more of the dye than say a piece of a nylon something you had in there wouldn't take on near as much. For some reason, the synthetic dyes don't have the ability to soak the dye up like the other. So I use pearl gray and then I use black and I try to use natural fabric because that's what I like to use. Um, Noreen says to stiffen it up your fabric, my linen that I was talking about starching it and I'm afraid to do it mid throw here. So I'm just gonna try to finish this out and then try it on another piece because I, after I thought about it, I thought, oh, what if I make my thread mad? Didn't wanna do that. So, but Noreen says, if you soak the fabric and then let it dry naturally and spray it with best press and then press it. Remember we don't iron, we're not doing clothes because that'll distort your fabric. So you wanna press it, press it without steam. So that will help stiffen it up. And I'm gonna try that on some pieces in the future. Uh, the calico stitch said stitches and things online so it stitches and then just the letter n things has a great has great false conversion charts and uh, we were talking last week about trying to find some of those i didn't have a lot of luck uh, several of y'all sent let me see joyce said stitchersvillage.com has free conversion charts if you go to their site stitchersvillage.com under resource library they have conversion charts Deborah says one, two, three stitch has conversion charts under free and fun. And then Ouija says one, two, three stitch if you go to floss and thread and then under color conversions. There's some there too. So I guess you can access it two ways on one, two, three stitch. She also says if you go to a Sulky's website, so the Sulky website for the Sulky thread itself, that they have conversions for, for their floss. So I thought that was great. So. Thank y'all for that because I was not having a whole lot of luck finding those at all. Deborah says she uses the Bright Tech Light View Pro 2 in 1. She got it on Amazon and she saw it on Stitch Roadies, which, if y'all haven't watched Stitch Roadies, um, if you get a few seconds, uh, she has tons of, she has quilt roadies and stitch roadies, and both of them are beautiful. She always has beautiful projects in her quilting and her, and her stitching. So, um, I always love seeing her, but that's where she said she heard about the Bright Tech Light View Pro, Pro 2 in 1, but she bought it on Amazon. Melissa said she found a paper mache box at Michael's for Midnight Ride. I showed it last week, but I didn't get it. I intended to put a few stitches in and I didn't get it done. But she found a paper mache box and put it on the top of hers and then lined it with fabric and everything on the inside because I'd asked her last week about if anybody had got the Lonium Lane box and loved it, if it was worth it. Cause I think it's like 125. It looks incredibly beautiful. So, um, and I don't think any of y'all chimed in that you had it. So if anybody does holler, um, but if not, Melissa says she found a paper mache box that it fits at Michael's. So, um, oh, and Ideal America, Ideal America said, check the bunting on my patriotic house. I don't, I, because she was concerned that I didn't finish out my red. I'm famous for that, missing something. I don't see, that I missed something, but I haven't finished because I, I kind of did some in the middle. So I have to go this way, this way. So I think that's probably what it was. Was it look like that? Um, Beth at Counting My Stitches says, oh, okay, I was checking these out and I'll also go ahead and say these now that I saw. 
she and her friend, um, Beth is counting my stitches and she and her friend are two over two stitchers on floss tube. And I did find them and I enjoyed them so much. It's her and her friend and they're stitching and they kind of, um, their styles aren't identical. So I did love the juxtaposition of like, uh, like one did more uh, samplers and different things. And one was really into Lizzie Kate this week. I don't know if she is all the time, but she really did a lot of Lizzie Kate this week. And even some uh, that she finished before. So that was like super fun to watch. So I enjoyed them so, so much. I got um, Julia the Stitcher Girl podcast. And I loved her stitching. She had some beautiful things to show. Pumpkin Creek Primitives. Um, she and I evidently are kind of of one mind too because I was laughing because she commented about the screen grabs. YouTube will, I mean, if I make this face here, that's the face, I promise you, that YouTube will do a screen grab on. What in the world? What in the world? YouTube, why, why? I can stand here like this and go, it will never pick that. Never, 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 never. 35 will be finished before they ever finish, before they choose that for my screen grab. And I know y'all don't live in Texas, but 35 has been under construction since the day I was born. And I'm gonna tell y'all when it gets finished, when 35 gets finished construction, Jesus is gonna come right straight up. It. That's gonna be when 35 is finished. So that'll tell you how long it's gonna be. It might be a minute, I guess it might be 5,000 years, but no. YouTube picks the craziest faces you make. I have never been able to use one on there because I look like a psycho in every one. Literally like I just busted out of Azkaban. Every one they pick. It's insane. So I enjoyed her. She also has um, an Etsy shop. The one, there was a couple more that I did not get to see. Um, and our friend, Jerlyn, I don't know how I've missed this. She has stitching and then the and sign. What is that one? The hypersand? One's ampersand. And one's high percent, maybe. Anyway, the one that looks like that, like a fancy S. Stitching and quilting with finish a quilt. Jerilyn, you didn't tell me, did I miss that? Did you tell me that I missed that? That she has a floss tube. So I did not get to her see her yet. And then there is another one that one of y'all told me to watch, and I haven't found it yet. What by IU Bear Stitching? And I'm probably saying that all wrong, and it's probably a name of something or something that I just completely butchered. But I'm still looking for that one. But um, so I did get some, a little bit of uh, floss tube time in this week, so I was excited. Uh, Nancy said Joann's has an alt light on Silva Sweet that she loved. It is item number 16156614. I thought I'd make it into Joann's this week and I didn't. So maybe I'll make it in this weekend. So thank you because I've, the lighting situation needs to, something needs to happen. Michelle says, do I lace or pin or sticky board? I usually use sticky board. I have laced. Um, it kind of makes me want to claw my eyes out. I don't have, once I finish something and I get my finishing mojo, I want to go, go, go. I want to finish it and display it and you can see it and no, 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 no. I don't, um, and the lacing to me is tedious. I got to pull it and 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 pull it. I'm feeling like I, the first time I got my first episiotomy. Uh, no, I guess it was second one after Michael was born. Lord, when I did like that, that's what the guy looked like he was doing, he'd go, It was like a million years old. I ended up with a doctor I had never met. Lord, her birthday's tomorrow. And I was this, I went to see my mama, spent the night down there. We leave down to Fairfield where my mom was, lived, and we're headed to Dallas. And we get on the highway and I had a contraction. And I said, oh, hey, that was a contraction. Well, I was only in labor with CJ for 45 minutes. So then my mama is in panic times a thousand because she ain't want to deliver no baby in the car on the highway, which, you know, I understand that. So we stopped at Corsicana on the way to Dallas, which is kind of sort of halfway. And um, the deal was, she said, just go in there and let them say if you're okay or not. If, they, if you're okay, we'll go, into your, we'll go into your hospital to your doctor in Dallas. I got in there and we'd been, what is it, 20 minutes maybe, 20 minutes to Corsicana from Fairfield, and I was at a 10. So I wasn't going nowhere. So I ended up with some old guy doctor who I'd never laid an eye on. And when I did that just then, that made me think when he was sewing me up down there, I was like, because he literally looked like he was lacing boots, y'all. 
I could see his hand going up like that. I was like, Lord, it took him forever too. Forever. I thought I was never gonna get out that delivery room, but, and that was after the delivery was over. The delivery was over with, Lord have mercy. So yes, my fifth birthday's tomorrow. So nearly my happy birthday girl to my only bitty girl. Um, so, oh boy, I get off topic this morning, man oh man. So I usually use sticky board. Um, do I, I use RIT and coffee and tea. I prefer to use RIT um, like that, like the automated BCs I just showed. I had some, pump, I had some, bleh, I had some coffee left over. I looked at the pumpkin and then came out of my mouth one day and I just poured it on there because it was lighter than I wanted. So I just poured it on there and um, let it set. And I think you even shot it in the microwave after one of y'all told me about that. And that does kind of help darken it up. So I don't use the oven a lot because I tend to burn my fabric. So fabric is a real thin piece of something. So I, you have to be really mindful and watch it. So I tend to just use the RIT. I prefer RIT. I can use the camel and get the same coffee tea look without having to uh, bake it. So, and here again, the synthetic fabric doesn't take the dye as well. Um, I prefer Monaco linen or Ada if I'm gonna do it. And then Michelle also asked about finishing and I did do about the finishing tutorial, finishing and I did a finishing tutorial. It is a finishing tutorial. It is, um, it's about, it's in March. It should be about between floss tube 12 and 13 in March. So. I did run there, it's just finishing a small piece, how I would finish, say an ornament or a little standalone or something like that. So, um, Jerry Lynn at Finish a Quilt said she would do the queen, of, she's doing the queen of losing it on purple fabric. And she's making it into a makeup bag, which I loved. I thought that was so perfect. And so, um, then I'll tell this right now, because I asked y'all last week, so we did a little poll on the fabrics for queen of losing it that Stitching in Brooklyn designed is so cute. And Brown got seven and Blue got what, about 15 or something? So I guess for now we'll go with Blue. I may do it, I may do it on both pieces and put, you know, I hate for him not to see it everywhere. This is beautiful fabric though. It is so sparkly and it's a piece of silk weaver. It is beautiful, but this one, and um, I'm going to put them, like I said, either on his side of the bed on a frame or probably on a pillow on James's side of the bed, lest he forget that I am the queen of losing it. He'd probably be like, never fear. That's never going to happen. But also, Geraldine's shop at Finish a Quilt, <clears throat> I'd had some stuff in my cart, and I'd been meaning to get it forever, and I couldn't get the dang, extra thing to work. James changed something on it. Um... If he goes to buy something and he doesn't, I don't have it set like he thinks it should be, you know, he'll just change it. So then I couldn't get it to work and then I finally remember to ask him. So when I was in there, she has the casting a spell. If any of you are looking for Blackbird Designs casting a spell, she also has um, the Blackbird Design stockings that are on the little tree. I'm probably going to make y'all sick. Right over there. And my big, I had all the uh, patriotic ones done. There, she has those in the shop. Um, I think I saw Adam's family in there and then um, a piece by Plum Street that I had to get called Goodbye Fall. And it has a little cardinal and the fall leaves and everything on it and some little snowflakes over here. It was beautiful. So she has a lot of good things in the shop right now. Fabric, floss, she carries floss. Uh, she ships like super fast. So I did finally get my order completed with Jerry Lynn. But like I said, I didn't know that she has a tube. So I'm going to try to get that one watched this afternoon. Um, April says the lipstick that I showed that Smashbox is a good brand and that's the one she buys a lot and uses. It's called Smashbox and it like goes on your lips and then it gets like it won't smear around under your mask. So when you take your mask off, you know, you don't look like you're dead because I'm going to tell you right now, this going without lipstick don't work for me. Does not work for me. I, when I was young, my lips had color in them. The older I get, the more my lips turn the same color as my face. My eyebrows are turning white and my lips are turning the same color as my face. Y'all know what's gonna happen? I'm gonna be looking like the Geico Gecko or a slea stack off the land of the lost before this is all said and done. So, I can't be going without no lipstick. So, 
Smashbox, she said, is a good brand, and I had that new color one also, so um, it won't smear all over your face and make you look like the Joker when you take the mask off. Judy says she's coming to town for the National Finals Rodeo. I don't think it's been here since like the 70s. It's been forever since it's been in town. So um, you'll be up close to the Stitch Niche. Uh, when you get there, there is, um, like I said, there's another one up on 75, and one of y'all mentioned it this week, 75 in Preston. It's mainly a needlepoint shop, but they do carry some charts, and they carry a lot of floss. So, but the Stitch Niche is fabulous, and they have all the fun things. So uh, when you're there for J National Finals, um, Judy, just you need to run on over the Stitch Niche. I probably will not go to the National Finals because any place there's a lot of crowds, I tend to try to not, not go. Vegas was really pushing it for me because it was inside. If it's crowded outside, I can do a lot better. If it's crowded inside, I'm on struggle times a thousand. So, yuck. So, I probably won't see you there even though I thought, said to myself, you know, you should go. It's right here. My husband said this morning, you never want to do anything fun unless it's like travel. I'm like, no, if I got my travel clothes on, we're traveling. If I don't, so, stitchy kindness this week. Um, I, we had so much fun. We got all the pretty things. So, thank y'all again so much. Um, I am just always shocked at all the beautiful things. Let me see here. I'll get this in the right order. Maybe. Maybe I will. And this one, I don't think I showed last week because I think it came on Friday, maybe. This is from Nancy. She sent me this beautiful card. And it is, um, and I'm gonna say it wrong, Skagit Valley Tulip Festival. Because I also say Spokane. And I met a guy a couple weeks back and I think he said it was Spokane. So, sorry y'all. So she sent me this beautiful card with a beautiful note in it. And this, which was so hilarious, because this is so fitting. Home Crazy Home. Yes, and this is definitely this place, Home Crazy Home. But this one here, and I'm gonna try to get up really close so y'all can see it. I've never seen it, but I think Lisa Kindred Stitcher was stitching it a couple of weeks back. She must have been stitching it and I missed it somehow because it stuck in my brain because I knew the name now. She said it was at the Framers, I think, this week. But Gilles Leger, Gilles Leger. I don't know, 1898, and it is by Reflet des But look at this, this beautiful alphabets and these beautiful cursive alphabets and that fabulous house. And look at the little cross with the dagger heart and the pear and the Eiffel Tower. I mean, all the beautiful things in here. This is beautiful. And she's wanting to start this on December 29th. And I think I will have my other, at least one, maybe both samplers finished by December 29th. And so I'm going to, I'm going to start that. So uh, thank you, Nancy, so much. And if any of y'all want to stitch along with us, that is Nancy's birthday. And um, we're going to do a little stitch along for her birthday on here. And it does give the, it gives the silks and the DMC numbers. So you can use either one. And the stitch count on it is... 307 by 240. So she's a big girl, but she's beautiful. So Nancy, thank you so much. I was like <gasps> just slobbering when I opened up that thing. That is gorgeous. Tammy sent me this box here and it was so fun because you know, you don't usually get things shaped like a present. It just looks just like present on there. I was so excited. It's like a big square present. And it has all these goodies in here. Now let's see. Oh, y'all, I'm gonna sneeze in a minute. Ugh. This, which I had never had, which I guess I'm the only person in the world. She says it's made in Washington and she sent this. This is so good. If you haven't tried this, and just don't, because it's so good. You'll wanna eat it all up. It is yummy. So it's almond roca. And like I said, I may be the only person in the world that's never had it, but it is delicious. It's got like toffee and almonds and stuff. So good, so, so good. She sent me this fabulous little pumpkin. Send me cute. So I, he's gonna go in the little, uh, well, you can't probably see it. I've got a runner I need to put out and then the dough bowl there. He will go in with some of these guys. In here, she sent me some of her favorite needles, John James needles. 
which I've used these before. These are so nice. Such nice, 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 nice. And then this beautiful fabrics. Look at these. This one. And then look at the chicken wire. Love it. And these red polka dot little. It's got little cross hatching and little dots on there. So these are fabulous, fabulous. So thank you, Tammy, for these. And then I got one of these, another one of these beautiful cards. And this one has a little piece cut out of Isabel Uffendale in it. Oh, I can't show it on the back. Anyway, it's got this little, um, let me see where I found it earlier. This little one here. Yeah. It's got this little section here on the back. So these hands across the seat cards are just, these cards are fabulous and so, so cool. And let's see here we got Lori Holt 10 count fabric, which I know that uh, Fat Quarter Shop has a stitch along going right now with the pumpkin on here and this, and it's very fun. It looks very burlappy like this. And I think they're using four four count of threads on it, which is different. Like I said, I used six on my, on that Santa that time and boy, how do you eat up some thread and you just don't realize how much more that is to get to lay flat, but it is so fun when it's done. So this is beautiful. Oh my gosh, I forgot to grab this one. Oh. And then she sent this beauty. Souvenirs of the Heart, Star Spangled Spectacular, and it is by Brenda Gervais, I think. Yeah, with a needle and thread. How fabulous is that? I thought this was so cute. Beautiful design. It's got a little bit of satin stitch in it. But I think that's all I see that is especially stitched. It's 69 by 88, and it is gorgeous. And then a little notepad which we always need notepads here, Lord knows. I don't know what it is, and a little, it has a little coaster in there too about this place, but we can run through some notepads around here. And I'm sure the girls probably help it a little bit because you know they love to be doing some writing and some drawing and some making cards and notes and letters and things. And um, I think Colleen got her, um, got her card and hers uh, with, even had some, she got some custom jewelry in hers. Kimmy James loves to be making her some stuff with beads and stuff, so she, she made even the necklace, so she'll get on her creative hair and boy, off she'll go. Now this, um, okay, this came yesterday, and this comes with a confession. This came yesterday from Ruth. I'm sure I don't show an address. The girls were so excited about this fancy dress this lady had on. They just thought that was fabulous. I swear it's a Barbie down there. And it's a fancy Barbie. And they said, sure, look at that dress. She's going to a ball. I said, yeah, she does look like she's going to a ball for sure. So she had a package for me and a package for the girls. And look at this twall tissue. How cute is that? I've never seen that, so I love that so much. But in it was the Shepherd's Bush Woolly Winter here. And... It has, and I don't think you can see too much. I'll try to scooch this over so you can't see too much pattern. It has the beads and the floss in here. And it is so cute. It has, can y'all see that little snowman and all that? And it is just that Shepherd's Bush has the cutest patterns. And the, the thing with the Shepherd's Bush is the texture. With all their little things, it's like texture. And I think um, Just Man's stuff, when she does these, a skinny scalp, it has this like texture that is Fabulous. And then this one, holy moly, I've never seen it. It is fabulous. And it has the silks in here. And it has this Autumn Arbor by Drawn Thread. How dang beautiful is that thing? I was in love, it has little beads in it too. I was just in love with these colors. So, so pretty. It has a little acorn, satin stitch acorns and stuff. Love it. So, then the girls had little packages in here that um, I would have showed this morning. She sent each of the girls little Pez candies with a little, you know, uh, one was a witch and one was a ghost. And then little coloring puzzles that they colored and, you know, you could take apart, put back together. 
and stickers. And so they needed to open those up yesterday, you know, right away when they opened their packages, they were so excited. And, um, and I've got some pictures on here to send you. I don't think I, I guess pictures to send you and I don't think I sent them yesterday, Ruth. They're, we're so excited. Well, normally I try to talk them into leaving it so I can show it, but last night Micah had a chamber event with Jen. Their shop had, oh y'all, had to host a chamber, a commerce event. They asked them if they would host it. So their daddy was picking them up. So last night was gonna be a daddy night. So they had wanted to open up their puzzles and color and everything and then they needed to take it home. They said, Should, we're, we're gonna take this home and finish it with daddy. So normally I would have asked them to can we leave it here so she can show it on the video in the morning? But Ruth, you probably save either their life or their daddy's life, one or the other, because they took all their little projects home with them last night. So hopefully they played with their projects and didn't give their daddy too much grief while he was home alone. Justin is fabulous with them. And um, I'm so thankful that he is so good with them, but let's be honest, that's a lot. That's a lot to have those two in the house because they go out this late at their house, they'll get mosquito bites and because you can't keep rid of the mosquitoes over there. And Kimi reacts to them like I used to and so does Justin. And now one time I got one that went all the way across my stomach <clears throat> with mosquito bite. So I don't do them well and she doesn't either and neither does Justin. So they don't need any more mosquito bites at all. And then I got this humongous box here from Melissa and I was just floored. It came with this beautiful card here. Look at these beautiful, what is that, anemones? Tulips? I thought I saw an anemone in there somewhere, but I think it's tulips and wax flower. But it is beautiful, beautiful card with the cardinals on here. A beautiful pan, which We've talked about how much I love pants. I'm gonna try to get it before you can see this. It's a beautiful angel. I love this, Melissa. It's so fabulous. And then I'm gonna show the other one. I'm gonna save the biggest, most fun here thing for last. So let's see if I can get all these out. Crinkle, 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 crinkle. Y'all, there are so many of these. She said she had doubles of a lot of these, and so she thought she would share. So I was just like, oh my goodness. Heirloom treasures. So there's cross stitch kits in here. This one's on 18 count fiddler's cloth. Is that one showing up? Maybe. Base of flowers with a beautiful border. There is, this is, I think, a little needle point. It's a hydrangea. Look at that thing. That is beautiful. This one is a kitty cat, and I think it's on, it's on 14 count fiddler's cloth. And these have the threads and everything in them. Beautiful. Another needlepoint kit with a uh, zinnia in here. Beautiful zinnia. A little bear. How cute is he? I'm getting ready for Christmas. This one is so fabulous. It's on 18 count fiddler's cloth. And it is like a, um, a wreath, a harvest wreath with all the vegetables and things in there. So, I mean, this one I think harvesty, but I mean, if you did, if you do uh, vegetables and stuff in your kitchen, it would be fabulous. This is a huge kit and I thought of you, Naughty Bear, when, um, when I looked at it, I think it's got 14 count in here, but it is Neptune's alphabet. And it has all these fish and coral and different things making the alphabet has, look at all the beautiful thread colors. That thing is fabulous. And oh, I just realized, Melissa, you done saved me this morning. Cause I'm a dummy and you done saved my life. This one is Christmas traditions. I thought it had another name on here, but look how pretty this is. And it has the, the black Ada and all the threads. But look at this guy. So, so pretty. This reindeer, I haven't done this in a long time. This, these guys are adorable, which you wouldn't have to do it on waist canvas if you didn't want to, but it's a waist canvas kit for putting it on a sweatshirt. 
which I haven't done in so, so long, but it is the cutest thing. And it has um, all these three snowman and this border, but the charts in here, you could do it on fabric if you didn't want to do it on, on your sweatshirt because the charts in here, so it would work just the same. But I thought it gave the designer name, but I don't see it on here. But it's Let It Snow, oh, by Ann McKinney. And these guys are adorable. So if you love snowmen, this one is fabulous. There are so many things. She just shared and shared. Look at this beautiful bow with these. It's got the oak leaves and the acorns in here. So, so pretty. I love this. And here again, you, it has the finished bow in here. But you could easily make this as a, like a bell pull like this, but because you have the beautiful pattern, you can keep on using it. Gorgeous. And this guy here is a Bucilla Advent Calendar. And it has all these little beads and these little guys that you can make the Advent Calendar and then, you know, put your little things on and off. So how dang cute is that? And all those little, it says all those little guys are in there and I think I can fill them right there. So all these little wood painted ornaments that hang on here are on here. So then you just take them off with by the little bead is like the little button holder. And this, I love, I had not remembered doing this in forever. And I used to love to do this. Ribbon embroider kit. How beautiful is that? And I hadn't done that in such a long time. And so I was like, oh, all these things. You just took me straight back with some of these. And I love them. But this, this, she knows me well. Look here. And y'all probably all seen this. And I have missed it somehow. Little House Needleworks Cardinal Winter. How cute is that? I loved it. But this was it. And I'm going to put it on all wrong. I folded it up so nice. But look, this is beautiful. And I have a black shirt that I cannot wait to wear this over. This beautiful hand-knitted shawl. She sent me, it's gonna look like terrible with this tea right here, but that way you can see the drape in the back. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? I just loved it. I was, Melissa, I opened that up and I could not believe it. I could not believe that was in there. It is absolutely gorgeous. And y'all know I can crochet a tiny, tiny pad but knitting is fascinating to me where you keep the two things going. I just, Mama Loves You GB Michelle says she feels that way about crochet, how you can do something with one hook. But I feel that thing with two needles, how you can keep two needles going, going, and, and it be like right. So this thing is just gorgeous. And I was just floored when I opened it up. So y'all, are so sweet and so kind to always share and send all these fabulous things. And I've now got a big old mess here, which is what I do best. I showed you last week how my messing goes because now I need to move these into here so we can do whips real quick before the girls come busting in because it could happen at any minute now. Okay. So here we go on to whips. Boy, I'm talking long this morning, y'all. Okay, whips. And I should have scooted this over here closer. Let me see if I can get my, yike. Let me grab this, y'all. Hold me. As I sniff and sniffle and I put these down here last night and tried to get these ready. So I could be ready to go earlier this morning. So now I have a big old pile of all these things and I'll just move this guy over here and we'll go through this way. Okay. We have autumn ABCs that I just got to, just got to start on. So autumn ABCs by Little House Needleworks. Everybody's done this. I think, um, I'm just late to the game. It is beautiful. Here are the threads. Um, I think these are all the called fours mainly on here, except my red. I've got, I think, what, barn door instead of whatever the other one was. Oh, y'all, I'm trying not to sneeze my head off. Sorry. 
and that is all I've got started. I did my pumpkin pumpkins and started on the queue and then I did this to show some color. I'm gonna set this here so if I can remember and we have time, I'm gonna do the pin stitch right here. One of y'all remind me. Okay, can y'all remind me in a minute to do that? Okay, then this is, oh y'all, man, I wanna sneeze real bad. <clears throat> Sign from heaven. Oh my gosh. It is so, so, so pretty. And I did, you know, I got my words done and then started down the border and I decided I had to add some color just to see how it was gonna look on the dark fabric. And this is uh, the coffee by Be Stitch Me. These are all my beautiful threads with my Charlie Harper thing from Laura there. And so I had to put this little bit of blue in, in the corner. And I am loving it. I am loving it. Here it is on there, um, on the light fabric. So here it is on the light fabric and then here it is on the dark. And I am just in love with these colors. This looks just like some piled up snow. Y'all, this piece is just, boy, it's showing out. I don't know anything else to say, but it just keeps on showing out. It knows exactly what it's supposed to be doing. I have just, I just cannot get over how much I love that on there. How much I love that blue on there. And it just kind of fades in, in the, in the picture you really don't, it doesn't show up so much in there at all. So I was super, super happy when I put those blue stitches in there. Like, yes. Patriotic House, I uh, got some work done this week. Patriotic House by Waxing Moon. And um, on Anne's suggestion, I'm gonna do it in a little drum. She did one of their other houses in a drum. Here are my colors, except for the ribbon red, which I did the last stitches in. I've gotta go pull another one of those. I think I have one in my stash. If not, holy moly. but it got some love this week. So I just have like the flag left and so I have the flag here. And then I have to carry this border around and down, down, and then this bunting across the bottom. So yeah, see, I just, um, I did, I had some red thread left probably from doing Liberty or something. And then, but I did not finish out going this way because I crunched it all up. You know, it's changed the stitch count on it. So I'm not sure exactly where I'm gonna stop my bunting and stop my border here to make it go down like this. So I'm just gonna have to play it by ear. I love, love, love this tree. I'd been putting out this tree because my brain has a hard time processing the curly cue things, just free floating curly cue things. My brain has struggles with that. So I put it that tree off and then I knew I'd love it when I got it done and I did. It is fabulous. So, like I said, I just gotta have my flag coming this way and then my bunting and my borders and we're on a finish here. And I am in love with this piece. And it's just on a 28 count T-Dyed Monaco. Um, I get it from Sunshine Lane. Down Sunshine Lane always has it. I don't know if somebody else carries it. I intended to ask Shelly if she ever keeps it, but Down Sunshine Lane usually has it in stock and I just order from there. Um, and then just order a big piece and then just whack off of it. Okay, Halloween Quaker is here. This design is so cute. It's working up really quick. I'll have a finish. That's a big bird flew out of my window. I didn't know what that was. Um, I'll probably finish it this weekend because I've really kind of trucked along on it really well. Um, these are my threads. I did add in the, I think it's red plum, gas red plum on here. They didn't have any purple in there and I have to have some kind of an off, if it's all fall colors. I don't know, that's just my weirdness. I have to have some kind of complimentary color. And I did not, um, I'm just gonna do mine like a pumpkin. I'm just gonna do mine like a pumpkin. I may go, I may backstitch 2020 on the pumpkin to get the year in there. But I have a lot of Halloween pieces, but I wanted this piece to get to stay out all through the fall uh, because I just love it. I love the design. Um, I love the Blackbird here. 
and it has uh, two Quaker motifs now on either side and the border and then just what's left of the alphabet. So this guy here is fabulous. This is on Be Stitch Me Toast. That piece of toast fabric I got is so beautiful. I've loved stitching on it. Since I'm not wearing my contacts um, and my eyes are gooky and I am going to get some of those eye drops to try to help. I'm sure it's allergies and stuff, but I've had a much easier time stitching on things, but this is just gorgeous. I am so in love with it, but I just added the purple berries and I changed the heart to purple. And then I'm doing my DL and I'll do my W in purple. So that one is just loving it. Love, love, loving it. So pretty. Then uh, my Hedro house. Which once again, I'm still not gonna copy mine. This, this big, big, and it's not that big, it's just a big book. It's a big, big book I have to hold up here. The sampler itself is 198 by 182. So it's not, it's not really that big. But I did my border in Freedom, and I think this red, I'll have to double check, is 4205 maybe from. Uh, DMC the color variations because I wanted a lot of variation in it and so I got my alphabet all done I did have to add a Q on the tail in the pattern there is no Q on the tail the Q is the same as the O and um, since it's not a antique reproduction I felt comfortable just adding that tail on there I would probably felt comfortable anyway but I did, I just added it in. And I am loving, loving, loving. This is another piece of the toast from Be Stitch Me. It is beautiful fabric. That fabric is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, now let's see who's left. I don't know. I don't have the chart over here, but this is May Health and Peace by Milady's Needle. I guess I left it on the other, yeah, right there. And this week I just grabbed it up and did some more on the border, outlined some flowers, did some flowers, did another outline here. And I just kind of go till I run out of thread and then I stop. And I thought what I would do this week again is try to make this corner and then just do a couple more flowers. Then I can add this, I can just fill this in. This can just be kind of mindless stitching as I go. So. We got some more border done and got two flowers that just need partial fill in and fill in. And then like I said, this is where the border turns and goes across down here. So we're getting really, really close on this guy, but it is so pretty. And I know that this one, these don't show up good for y'all in, in the house here, they show up a lot better. But when I pull it back, it doesn't show up as much. But this one really, it does not show up as it should as it should on screen. There's little teal flecks here in the moth. I mean, it just has so many little extras in here that you don't catch just looking at it far off like this. But it is a beautiful, beautiful piece. This is 28 count weeks linen. Like I said, it is very pretty, but it is open. It's an open weave you can see it if I get closer. It has got an open weave to it, so if that if that bothers you, um, you might double check the week's linen because it's beautiful and it, um, if you're not used to stitching on linen, if you're used to stitching on Ada and you, I, I say go to a 28 count or something big because that makes it easier, but it is, if it's an open weave, it's got a little wiggle to it. So just know that, and if you're stitching hand, it's gonna give you some wiggle. So be mindful of how tight you pull your stitches so you don't over pull or under pull. And I mean, cause you can really bow your fabric up. I saw a lady drop one off to be framed one time at the, when I was in the Hobby Lobby and I thought if I was that man, I'd have said, no, girl, you take that back home. Try to flatten that thing out. It looked like the hills of West Virginia or something. It was just all oh, bubbled up, bowed up because she had, I guess, stitched it in hand and her stitch tension was all over the place. I don't know how that man was ever gonna get that thing flat to frame it and look on his face. Like I said, I would have said, ma'am, you're gonna have to take this home and block it because if I try to flatten this out, it is gonna ruin your needlework. But 
he didn't. He just took it and said, uh, well, it may take me a while, but you know, I'll, I'll do the best I can. Um, it's a little, um, I'm gonna have to try to stretch it and I hope it doesn't pull your stitches one way or the other. He was very sweet about it. And I would just been like, woman, what do you want me to do with this? You need to get home and finish your needlework because you have not finished it out if it looks like this. It's a wreck. This thing's a hot mess. I had no finishes this week, no FFOs this week. Um, let me see if I can, I'm gonna try to tilt this down real quick and see if we can do this pin stitch stop and start here. Let's see here. Um, oh, huh, there's a little bit of the entryway over there. Y'all probably don't ever get to see. Okay, let's see here if I can go like this. And we're just gonna take this guy off of here Put on my cheaters. This is just the end of the Autumn ABCs. There have been, we have had some discussion with several friends lately about a pin stitch stop and start. So if this is gonna be your, you're gonna come right up, or this is how I do it, and y'all, this may not be right. So here, you're gonna come right up here. And we don't even have to pull it because we're gonna take it back out, which ain't gonna be easy, but. And then you're gonna go, can y'all see? Right in the hole under there. Is it focusing on that? So we're going right in the hole under that. If I can find my needle, we are. Yike. Well, hello. We're gonna go right in here. So now we have half, okay? And this stitch is going right up and down. It's gonna be the center of our cross stitch. So then we're gonna pull it out again. So here we are right here. I hope that's focusing somewhat. And we're gonna go right back in the same center hole. So our very center hole here is what we've got. Now, so we have a little two half stitches. This is what we look like on the back. I left a tail hanging out here. Okay, is that gonna focus at all? But with that, just for that, this is not coming loose. I'm jerking on this. You see how it's moving the whole fabric. This is not coming out. Um, we talked about some of you were having some problems with um, stitches coming out. And if you just, and some people do just catch their tail under one time and just keep going. I'm not about that. I can't live it that fast and loose. And I'm pretty fast and loose. But, and then you're going to come over here. So you've just crossed right over that. And then we're gonna come right, so we've made our first leg of a cross. And we're making our second leg here. So here's the center where we, this is our first lockdown stitch. And then we're going here. So here's our cross and I'm jerking on this and this is not coming loose. You can go back at any point and clip this tail short and then to stop it, so here's our X, we're done. And especially if you're doing confetti stitches, just all free floating, you know, out here and out in there. We're gonna come out, so here's our two sides. We're gonna come out right here. And it ain't always easy to get there. So we're right here at the side, at the very in-between. And then you're gonna go right back down through your center. So you go under, don't go over, go under your cross and push it in. And then you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. We're gonna go right here to this middle guy. And you can do this on Ada too. You just have to push through the threads, okay? So you can do this on an Ada and it will do the same thing. You just have to break through those, um, you just have to divide those threads that make your X in the Ada. And then you're gonna push right down through the center and you're done. And there's your cross. Nobody will ever notice that there's little things around it. And then you can just tie, cut off. Let me grab these scissors here. Cut off these extras. Okay. And this guy is not going anywhere. See me pulling on that? I'm pulling on this. I'm pulling on this so much that I'm distorting the thread and this is not coming out. 
this stitch is gonna stay in place. That's how I do a pin stop and a pin start. I hope that showed up some and helped some um, at all. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm gonna put y'all back up here real quick. Uh, we're nearly done, man. I've been blabbing on for an hour and 10 minutes today. Y'all gonna be ready to shut me. Okay. Now, for what I'm saying, Melissa saved me here because I forgot to grab the chart I was going to share today. So we will share some of these beauties because I cannot stitch all these guys. They are gorgeous, but there's no way I can get them all done ever. So let's just grab a couple here and go. We'll do, let's do four of these guys. She was so sweet to share them. I'm gonna share them straight on, some of them straight on with y'all right now because I forgot to grab, oh, and I'm crookedy. Lord have mercy. Nose is red, I'm all crookedy. So we will share these four uh, kits. Um, if you don't like to use Ada, you can always use the pattern and use your own fabric, okay? Remember that. So if you like this pattern, but you're like, oh, I don't, I don't like stitching on Ada, I like a softer fabric, that's fine. The, the kit is still here, the pattern is still in here. So this one is Bucilla with the advent calendar. So if you're interested in this share, be sure and use the word toy in your comment, okay, toy. And this one is, God, this is beautiful. Autumn leaves. I love this thing. Oh, these are beautiful colors in here. So if you're interested in this one, in this share, in this kit, use the word um, acorn <laughs> in your comment. This is gorgeous. Oh, Melissa, you saved my life this week because I'm a dodo and left that other charts in there. Whew. Um, like I said, Naughty Bear, I thought of you when I saw this. Neptune's Alphabet. Use the word fish if you're interested in this one. This is beautiful. Look at those colors. That, that says right there I need to be in Mexico or Jamaica right there. And I do. But they won't let me in the country right now. Mm. Well, I guess Mexico will. Jamaica won't. I don't blame them. Um, Neptune's alphabet used the word fish. This is gorgeous. And then this last harvesty one, um, if you are interested in this one, be sure to use the word um, harvest. Let's use the word harvest for this guy. So those are our four shares this week. Melissa was sweet enough to share them with us and I will pass some of them on right now because I'm a dodo and left the other chart in there that I was gonna share. I hope the pin stitch start and stop helped. Um, I hope y'all have a great week. Get your fall decorating going. Um, like I propped the wreath up over there. We're gonna hang it up. We had the wreath making session. I've got this guy over here to put, this was a little ugly pillow outside that is all faded. I don't know if you can see it in here. Anyway, I just, this is a, this is one of those tea towels that you embroider across here from Hobby Lobby Michaels, one of those places. And then I've got little buttons somewhere. I'm gonna put little buttons all across here, like this. Oh, dang, sorry. All right, anyway, put all little buttons on here. And so this is one of my outside pillows and I intended to go outside. Y'all gonna get to see the mess we left outside, but I'm gonna give y'all a laugh. Y'all know I don't plan anything, right? I just, I'm like the world's worst about just, let's just go with it, right? So here, and I hope I don't make y'all throw up. But I was in my pillow making mode. I need to cover up these pillows out here. Uh, some of them went to Micah's shop yesterday for the event, but this one was hilarious. This is me because I have no sewing experience. So here's this little, this little, hey there, pumpkin. He's upside down. The girls move these pillows around all the time. But I knew I had these napkins in here. Oh, look, we got a little bit of a frosty this morning, y'all. Huh? Look at there. But I knew I had these napkins and they were a little bit like fady after all these years. And I thought I will use them to cover this ugly pillow. Okay. See this ugly pillow's up. It's got real faded E and everything in there. So I thought I'll make it like a little envelope and make the edges of the pillow overlap. Except, you know, I never have a plan and I don't know that much about sewing. So you see what happened on the backside. Yes, that is the seam sticking out the back. No, I am not going to change it. There you go. This is my life. This is me just flying by the seat of my pants at all times and just, hmm, this is how it goes. So. Let's see, we're out here and I got out some, I don't know if you can see my little pumpkin guy over here. I'm trying to see what y'all see. 
he's out, little pumpkin, there's a little scarecrow out, and there's a scarecrow over on that side. So, and the girl should be here any minute. So I hope y'all have a great week and enjoy your stitching. Bye.